On September 15th, the U.S., the U.K., and Australia announced the formation of a new security alliance, AUKUS. The most significant part of this partnership is that the U.K. and the U.S. will help Australia build at least eight nuclear-powered submarines. Previously, the U.S. had only shared nuclear propulsion technology with the U.K. Australia is now the second country to have it. Australia thus cancelled its diesel-electric submarine agreement with France, much to the displeasure and disappointment of the French government. However, the most angry party at the moment is Beijing. Although the Australia-UK-US agreement does not mention a single word about China, the first comment from various parties outside is that it targets the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. Duncan Smith, the former leader of the Conservative Party and a heavyweight member of the British Parliament, wrote an article in the British newspaper, The Independent, saying bluntly that AUKUS is the starting point of a new era for the free world to redefine its relationship with China. A nuclear submarine is powered by a nuclear reactor that can dive underwater for long periods of time with a maximum duration of 90 days. One enormous advantage is that it does not require refueling. A nuclear submarine is generally put into service with enough uranium fuel to ensure a service life of more than 30 years. The underwater speed of a nuclear submarine is impressive, making it difficult for a typical watercraft to keep up. Its strategic advantages also include stealth, the ability to lock onto targets in secret without being detected. The ultimate threat of a nuclear submarine, however, lies in its ability to deploy nuclear missiles. Since Australia is a signatory to the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, its Prime Minister has made a point of stressing that Australia will not use nuclear weapons to arm these submarines. Even without nuclear heads, a conventionally armed nuclear submarine would be enough to tip the balance of naval power in the Pacific. Because of these superior capabilities, nuclear submarines have become the dream of many nations to develop advanced navies and enhance their international standing. Korea Radio International reported that a senior U.S. government official was asked on September 20th why allies such as South Korea could not receive the same treatment as Australia. He replied, The U.S. has no plans to extend the provision of technical support for nuclear submarines to other countries. There are far fewer countries globally that publicly claim to have nuclear submarines than countries with nuclear weapons in the ground. In fact, there are only six of them. Now Australia is about to become the seventh country to have nuclear submarines, which transforms the existing landscape of global military power. The CCP currently has 12 nuclear submarines. The U.S. is building eight attack nuclear submarines for Australia in one go, with technology two generations more advanced than the Chinese, which poses a considerable threat to the Chinese Communist Navy. If war breaks out, Australia will be able to take on the Chinese Navy even without U.S. assistance. This means that the previous Indo-Pacific strategy has been fully upgraded with Australia, located at the southern end of the Pacific Ocean and between the U.S. and China becoming the strategic hub. Taiwan's government would feel a little more secure at this point. If Australia had a nuclear-powered submarine, its routine cruises would be able to cross the South China Sea, which Beijing claims to have sovereignty over as far north as Taiwan. The U.S., Britain, and Australia were originally members of the Five Eyes Alliance for Intelligence Sharing. So what's the point of the AUKUS Agreement? The significance lies in the fact that the U.S. has broken the post-World War II precedent of sharing only the most advanced technological military capabilities with the U.K. It now includes Australia in the unique partnership between the U.S. and the U.K., in addition to sharing intelligence, they have further agreed to share cutting-edge military defense technologies and capabilities and open up the most sophisticated technologies, industries, and markets between the three countries. This is to say that in the event of a breach of security order in the Indo-Pacific region, the three countries have already formed a core defense force to defend the democratic and free world. 
It is well known that the most likely locations for a breach of security in the Indo-Pacific region are the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea. Now the Australian government is gaining not only weapons systems, but a higher level of alliance with the U.S. The United States has no closer or more reliable ally uh, than uh, Australia. We have a big agenda to discuss today, uh, starting with our partnership to advance our vision of a free and open Indo-Pacific. And uh, this, uh, this conversation that we're going to continue with Japan, India, and India on Friday, and uh, the first uh, in-person quad leaders meeting. It's a historic event, and we're, I think we're all looking forward to it. But it's not just about our partnership, because our partnership reaches out to so many others. Whether it be our friends in, in the ASEAN nations, or in Europe, or elsewhere, where we share so many like-minded interests. And so the issues we discuss in our partnership today really do reach out to so many others uh, in terms of how we address the global challenges. So, uh, Mr President, I, I want to thank you for your leadership and your focus on the Indo-Pacific region. There's well, no doubt that you, you get it. Well, I think the last point you made is important. It goes well beyond just our partnership. Our partnership is in line with all the other democracies in the world. When announcing the establishment of AUKUS, the leaders of the U.S., Britain, and Australia said that the initial phase of U.S.-British assistance to Australia in building nuclear submarines would last for 18 months. Predictably, the CCP is furious, and the official Chinese media, Global Times, immediately accused Australia of being a lapdog of the U.S. Australia. 引進具有戰略軍事價值的核潛艇技術 Australia is now introducing nuclear submarine technology of strategic and military value. The international community, including Australia's neighboring countries, has reason to question Australia's sincerity in honoring its nuclear non-proliferation commitments. 美國、英國與澳大利亞開展 Cooperation on nuclear-powered submarine technology between the U.S., the U.K., and Australia will gravely undermine regional peace and stability, aggravate arms race, and impair international nuclear non-proliferation efforts. It runs counter to regional countries' wishes. The three countries should discard the Cold War zero-sum mentality and narrow geopolitical perspective, follow the trend of the times for peace and development, and stop forming exclusive blocs or cliques. Among the countries in the South China Sea region, Indonesia and Malaysia echoed the CCP's voice, but the Philippines has chosen to support Australia. In a September 19th statement, the Philippine Foreign Affairs Secretary said, The enhancement of a near-abroad ally's ability to project power should restore and keep the balance rather than destabilize it. He added, Without the actual presence of nuclear weapons, the AUKUS Pact would not violate a 1995 treaty banning arms in the region. In addition to Beijing, there is another wounded country, France. Five years ago, Australia agreed to a 40 billion US dollar contract to buy 12 diesel electric submarines from France. It was one of the most lucrative defense deals in the world, but it was delayed because of various problems. Now Australia has cancelled the contract and will pay out billions of US dollars in expected revenue and $1.7 billion in losses of cost to the French side. Australian Prime Minister Morrison said Australia had no capacity to develop nuclear submarines when the contract was signed. Dropping the contract was not so much a change of mind as a change in demand. Australia's strategic view of Communist China has changed dramatically since 2016 when the contract with France was signed. Australia's proposal to investigate the source of the COVID-19 virus has angered the CCP. In addition, Beijing's actions in the South China Sea and its attempts and actions to control the Pacific trade have worsened relations between Australia and Beijing. In a fit of anger, France recalled its ambassadors to the U.S. and Australia and canceled a scheduled event at its embassy in Washington that was to celebrate the 240th anniversary of the American War of Independence. Paris said they learned of the announcement of the Australia-UK-US defense agreement only a few hours before it was made. So how did this surprising agreement come about? 
An article in the September 18th edition of The Times revealed the backstory, describing it like a spy novel. In March 2021, when Britain's first sea lord, the professional head of British Naval Service, was invited to a meeting of the Australian High Commission, to his surprise, Australian Navy Commander Michael Noonan asked him if the UK and US could help Australia build a nuclear powered submarine. Australia wanted faster, more stealthy submarines, with almost unlimited endurance and, crucially, for surveillance purposes. Australia wants nuclear-powered submarines to move quietly, stay out of port, conduct tracking operations, keep a close eye on undersea cables and follow submarines to deter Chinese influence in the region. When the British Admiral returned to Britain, he passed this vital information to Stephen Lovegrove, then Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Defense. The Prime Minister's office then launched Operation Hookless, a secret operation in which only 10 people in the country knew the details, including the Prime Minister, the Foreign and Defense Secretaries, and Lovegrove, who was soon to be appointed National Security Advisor. Those present had to sign a document vowing not to divulge the secret details of the discussions. The U.S. Pentagon, State Department, and Energy Department, in turn, spent a long time discussing the issue. British Prime Minister Johnson pushed for it. As chair, the UK held a G7 summit in June 2021. Johnson tacitly pressed ahead with Operation Hookless, and the details of AUKUS were virtually finalized among the leaders of Britain, the US, and Australia during the G7. Garrett Martin, co-director of the Center for Transatlantic Policy at American University, said, My sense from the Biden administration is that this does speak volumes about the importance of confronting China, even if it means angering a major European ally. He also said nuclear submarines will not be available right away, but for the first five to ten years, it is important that this partnership shows Australia's posture and willingness to stand up to the CCP, as well as a change in U.S. attitudes. I just think it's, it's, it's time for some of our dearest friends around the world to, you know, prone and grip uh, about all this, uh, and donne moi and break. Uh, because this is uh, fundamentally a, a, a great step forward for global security. Uh, it's three very like-minded allies standing shoulder to shoulder, creating a, a new partnership for the sharing of, of technology. President Biden and French President Macron spoke on the phone for half an hour on September 22nd. They will also meet in Europe at the end of October 2021, probably during the G20 Leaders Summit in Italy. This is considered a typical American non-apology apology. The French ambassador in Washington will now return to his post. There is no word yet on whether the French ambassador to Australia will also return. Yes, we have, and, and the opportunity for that call is not yet. Uh, but we'll be patient. We understand their disappointment. And uh, that is the way you manage difficult issues. It's a difficult decision. It's a very difficult decision. And of course we had to weigh up what would be the, the obvious disappointment to France. But at the end of the day, as a government, we have to do what is right for Australia and serve Australia's national security interests. And I will always choose Australia's national security interests first. On September 17th, the Australian Foreign Minister and Defence Minister met with their US counterparts in Washington, D.C. After the meeting, Australian Defense Minister Peter Dutton told reporters that the U.S. would deploy all types of U.S. military aircraft to Australia on a rotating basis to expand air cooperation between the two countries. U.S. Secretary of State Blinken said that the U.S. would stand with Australia to counter pressure from the Chinese Communist authorities. Under the agreement, more U.S. aircraft of all types, including bombers, would be deployed to Australia and more maintenance personnel and military logisticians. Some commentators are concerned that the AUKUS alliance could spur Beijing to launch an early war for the unification of Taiwan. According to the plan claimed by the CCP, Beijing theoretically has to complete the unification of Taiwan by 2050. When Beijing feels a realistic threat, it cannot rule out the possibility of advancing the time frame for an armed reunification of Taiwan to 2030 or even before 2027. However, if Beijing's plan to attack Taiwan by force is sped up, likely the CCP's disappearance from the world political stage will also be sped up accordingly.